first thing we're going to go over is a basic instrument tie just for attacking single suture. All right, so again, we're just doing this outside the mouth so you can see it. Um, obviously, you can imagine it's a little bit more difficult inside the oral cavity. So for a basic tie is we're going to come in from the unattached buckle side, try to get a good bite. And remember, I'm just going to flick my wrist, okay? I'm going to push it through, okay? I'm going to reach through, okay? And once I get a little bit of clearance, I'll come and make another grab at it. And then I'm going to come to the attached side. It's kind of goofy. Pull this through. Okay. And once you get this pulled out, okay, what you want to leave is only about, and this is kind of funky on this type of on, but you're going to leave only about, about an inch is all that you need there, okay? Once you get that, <clears throat> You're gonna protect your needle, right? You just got it kind of dangling there, but you wanna protect it. Don't let it dangle down to the patient's face or anything like that, okay? Take up this, and there's basically two moves that you're gonna do here. One, you're gonna wrap twice. You see this? In the same direction. Two quick wraps, okay? A little bit close. I'm gonna reach, and I'm gonna grab the very end. Don't grab down here, go to the very end. Pinch it, get it close. And then literally just pull that together like that okay now for the last one because I went this way the first time I'm gonna go the opposite one turn and grab and pull the other way so I got three knots two in one direction one in the other direction that locks it down and I'm done okay all right so this we're gonna do the same thing but instead of doing an instrument tie we're gonna do a basic hand tie okay so same thing I'm gonna come in and get a good bite pull it up through okay all right and the reason why you don't try to bite both at the same time is you have a little bit more control of exactly where you want your exit suture to be if you take two bites of it rather than one okay all right so I'm gonna pull this through all right and so with the hand tie you can see here I'm gonna protect my needle all right to where it's not pointing out at anybody all right this is goof on the top down again but I'm gonna pull it through and I'm gonna leave about maybe about a little bit more than that so about six to eight inches of extra string on that side right all right so the you may have to watch this a little slower and do it on your own time to do it but basically you're going to run these strings opposite direction across your hand between my first finger okay and my thumb i've got it this way okay and i've got it laying across my three here i'm going to take this one the opposite direction okay and i'm doing i'm going to stick my middle finger there flip it I'm gonna let go with my pointer finger, grab it there, cinch down, okay? Then you just do that three times, and cut it, okay? It may take a little bit of time, but that's it. So the um, advantage with a hand tie is it's a little bit faster. Um, you don't have a needle dangling around. Um, the disadvantage is you need a little bit longer suture. So if you just have a little bit of suture left, you would have to do an instrument tie. Uh, and then again, disadvantage is it does take a little bit more skill uh, and practice to get that one down. So, okay. All right, the size uh, ties we're gonna do a running tie. So if you've, if you've extracted an entire quadrant or you know reflected a bunch of tissue or something like that and you need to make a continuous tie, we're gonna have, show how you do that. So we're gonna start out with the same basic concept. We're gonna go ahead and push through on both sides, okay? And remember, take two bites, keep the needle at 90 degrees, okay? All right, now, personally what I do, if I'm doing a running tie, is I will do a hand tie for my most distal, remember, because we're always gonna go distal to mesial, okay? So I run in, do a quick hand tie on the back, okay? Okay, then what you'll do is you will actually cut your trailing leg, but don't cut both sides, just cut the, the trail side, okay? <clears throat> then come back and go on to your next stitch, right? So you're gonna move on this way, okay, a little bit, okay? okay I'm gonna take a bite of both. Now, the trick here, so once I get this through, if you can see this kind of up close, is I'm not going to grab it from the front. I'm going to go through my stitch to pull it out, okay? The reason why I do that is that when you pull it, it creates a lock like that. Okay? And it's kind of hard on the top of Don again. Um, I'll show it after, do about two in here, okay? 
Again, I move on to my next location. Top of Don doesn't want to cooperate. I'll push it where it's almost ready to go. And again, remember, I come through my stitch, pull it through. Like that and see how that creates kind of a locking mechanism on all that see rather than just looping over it it's going to actually lock and create a stitch there okay so then imagine you might have to do you know several depending on how long the thing is you're doing um, but then your final stitch the trick to this one <clears throat> you're going to push it through and you're not going to pull it all the way through what you're going to do is leave a loop of about an inch okay and what I do again on these is I'll do a hand tie in the back and do an instrument tie at the front but to kind of protect myself so I'm done with it I'll go ahead and just cut my sharp it's done boom that's out of here <clears throat> then what I do is I do an instrument tie just like we did earlier but with that extracting loop there so two curled this way grab the very furthest point pull and then I'm gonna go this way remember reverse it grab Pull. Right. You're done.